Okay, take number two with this. I started the recording, got a few minutes into it, and um, I found out that the text was all screwed up because I forgot to reconfigure that. Okay, take number two. Welcome to this game. I'm going to read the intro again. The Labyrinth Swallowed All. Innocents were stranded. Sinners drowned in the depths. The damned have vanished there. The great power was lost to man, and Mother Earth turned her back to the new world. Only the cursed king on his throne in the abyss remembers that golden age. Welcome to Etrian Odyssey. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into here, and let's go ahead and delete data. Yes, I would love to delete my data. Data was successfully deleted. Let's turn the BGM. Uh, that can see where it is. That can see where it is. Message speed, I'm going to set that to no wait. That way messages appear instantly, and I don't, I don't have to wait for all the text to load up. So, let's start up a new game. One day in the small, isolated town of Etria, an underground forest was discovered. The Rada, governors of Etria, issued a proclamation throughout the continents. Any able-bodied adventurer was invited to investigate the forest and explore its depths. But no matter how many came to investigate the dungeon, none gained the renown they sought. As more adventurers tried and failed to conquer it, it came to be known by a new name. The Yggdrasil Labyrinth. You are the latest adventurer to journey to Etria in response to Rada's proclamation. You have but one goal. Explore the forest to win fame and fortune. Etria is at hand. Town of Etria, the Verda Plaza. So yeah, at the start of the game, the only place you have access to is the Explorers Guild. So let's go there! Yay! Haven't seen you before. I take it you've come to check out the Yggdrasil Labyrinth? Then welcome, friend. Not many guilds lately are admitting new adventurers. Those short-sighted losers care too much about trifles to do any real investigation. If you've got the guts, you should make a guild entirely for newcomers. There are loads of guys just sitting on their thumbs who'd join any guild that'd take them. How about it? You wanna make a guild? Oh, heck yeah. Great. Let's get started. Write what you want to call your guild in this ledger. Someday the world will know this name, so think carefully before choosing it. Now, I was gonna originally go with the name of Hotlongs, <laughs> cause Kenshi, but I'm gonna go with something a little bit different, something that makes a bit more sense to me. Kindred. No, not a reference to Monster Hunter 4. Just Kindred because it's a name I happen to like. Kindred, huh? Not a bad name. Heck yeah, it's not. Now that you've got a guild, you'll need adventurers to fill it. Of course, you can go into the labyrinth yourself, and I intend to do so. If you've got the stones, register your own name as, an ab as a member. More adventurers means more options open to you, and less of a chance of dying down there. Think about it for a while, and make sure you register a variety of classes into your guild. Yes, that is extremely important in this game. Alright, let's register a new person. First up, we have myself. Cubix. And I'm the protector. I protect people. Let's go ahead and register another adventure. Next up, we have Venti. A very close person to me. They are going to be a lunch connect, and we're gonna go with that portrait. Yes, register another adventurer. Next up, we have Coastal. Also known as Ivy, she has helped me out with Pokemon Black, as well as Monster Hunter, as well as Wind Waker, and a failed Let's Play of Yoshi's Island that we tried back in 2019. Maybe we'll get back to that someday. But anyway, Ivy, she is the medic. And we're gonna go with... Hmm... Let's go with that portrait for Next up, we have Jazz Cats. Also known as Rose, but she has not helped me out in many of my Let's Plays. Most she has done has appeared right at the end of the Wind Waker Let's Play while the credits were rolling, and then I had to leave and go do dishes while Ivy finished up that video. She is going to be the Troubadour, and we're gonna go with that portrait. And the last person, last but certainly certainly not least, we have 98. No, not some alter ego of mine. <laughs> no, 98 is a very special person to me as well. But in a different way from Venti. 
They will be the survivalists with bat portraits. They will be the ones saving our asses on multiple occasions. Register another adventure? Nah, not right now. We're gonna need to do that again later for some side quests, but for right now, we'll just stick with this theme. Alright, so we're gonna go with Cubix and Venti on the front, Coastal, Chazcat, and 98 on the back. And now, we're gonna open up our menu and go into Custom. In the Custom menu, you can spend skill points to learn new skills. In this game, for each level you gain, you earn only one skill point. Use them wisely, either to strengthen, strengthen existing skills or learn new ones. Alright, so for myself, I'm gonna learn shields, get front and back guard, then I'm gonna be building a front guard first. So yeah, with the protector, I'm gonna be building a defender. This is pretty much the best skill in the entire game for the, um, for the protector. Defender and protector, kind of, kind of weird saying those two words in the same sentence, I'm getting confused here. But anyway. For Venti, they will be getting, um, two of swords for now. Cleaver, but I'm not gonna bother with that skill. Yeah, I'm going to be getting swords and axes up to level 5 to get 2 hit, and then once you have 2 hit and swords at level 5, well, 2 hit at level 3 and then swords at level 5, you gain access to the all slash skill. Yeah, uh, Venti's going to be of not great use until level 12, unfortunately. Coastal will be getting healer. Cure is now available. You'll learn one level in cure. And another level in healer. Patchup is now available. Completely useless. You heal up to 25% of your maximum health after a battle. Completely useless. A waste of 10 skill points out of the 72 you will be getting in this game. Potentially 78. Okay, Chazcat is going to be getting songs for Bravery, Shelter, and Mercury. We're gonna level up Bravery. This needs to be at level 10. It is at level 2. Yeah, you've got a long way to go, Chazcat, but you'll be a great asset anyway. 98, you're gonna be getting bows. True Shot is now available. Useless. Disable is now available. Useless. We're building for multi-hits. That is a very powerful skill. Fire two arrows at once, or three at high levels. Yes. Very, very good skill. And let's leave. That's everything. You're ready to get started. I hope you can shake things up in this town and clear out some of the dead wood. I'm looking forward to the day the Kindred Guild becomes known the world over. Alright, now we're gonna go to Shaleka's Guilds. I think the Guildmaster will be about the only character that I voice. Uh huh. Uh, well, uh, we're the newest guild like that? I'm sure there are plenty of guilds like that, but we're the newest one. Cool. Alright, so let's go ahead and buy some stuff. Uh, I'm gonna buy a wood bow. I'm actually gonna buy two of those. Let's see here. The rest of this stuff is just worthless. Is just worthless garbage. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna buy a targe for cubics and five leaf boots. You're gonna need these. Buy a knit glove as well. And let's go ahead and equip those. In the equip menu, you can change. You can adjust the party member's equipment. Some classes require particular weapons to use some of their skills. Be mindful of this. This only applies to the Launch Connect and the Dark Hunter. Put the Targe and Cubics, and a Leaf Boot. Venti is going to get a Knit Glove, and a Leaf Boot. Everybody else just gets a Leaf Boot. They're on the back, they don't need any extra defense. Alright. Oh, right. <laughs> Almost forgot to equip a wood bow with both people. There we go. Now coastal, rather than that one, you get a knife. Yeah, her attacks are still shit even from the back row. But they're a little bit less uh, awful with that knife equipped. And let's sell off the knife. And the wand. You don't have a thing to sell me. And um, let's see here. Up next is Rada Hall. Now if I had some if I had Venti with me, I commentate then I'd probably have them voice this guy. You got that right. Well, that just makes sense. It's like applying for your license. You can't just let anybody drive on the road, although we pretty much do anyway. Sure thing. Alright. New adventures must be tested by mapping the first floor of the labyrinth. Meet the soldier on B1F for details. Sure thing. 
Okay. <laughs> what, and doing what? Washing dishes for the rest of their lives? Come on. We're adventurers, not kitchen folk. <laughs> Alright. Cool, thank you. Alright. Okay, now before we go into the labyrinth, there's something extremely important that needs to be done first. Now, when I first played Etrian Odyssey, I thought this guy was a girl. And in Millennium Girl, he has a, uh, he has a male voice, which pretty much... Well, actually, that might not mean anything at all. I'm just being stupid. Being, being dumb, that's all. Well, not like I really have a choice in the matter. Where, will, where else am I gonna sleep? In the stable? That was a reference that almost nobody will get. Yeah, your first save is always going to take a long time. I promise that saves after this will be really quick. Save successful. Well, of course it was. I'm not cheating right now. Go to the forest entrance. The brink of the maze, the forest entrance. And let's enter. The first stratum, Emerald Grove. The first hope-filled step, and in my opinion, the last one. You'll soon be discovering why. The Yggdrasil Labyrinth. One task must be performed before challenging its steps. As you have some skill in adventuring, some three skill points should be available to you. To spend them on skills useful in the Labyrinth, open the main menu with the Y button. Select Custom to allocate skill points, but think carefully before doing so. You may already be aware of this, in which case this advice is happily unnecessary. If so, then hesitate no longer to begin your adventure in this lush green forest. Oh, heck yeah. Alright, so let's see here. Let's go on ahead. As you walk the narrow path, greenery all around, you see a soldier standing guard. Well, thanks for the warm welcome. A few questions for the soldier spring to mind. But you wonder if you shouldn't let him be. Well, what are you doing here? The soldier answers your question slowly. What is he, Ents? Hmm, huh. okay. That's what I'm here to do. They did indeed say that. Great. In this game, you must draw your own map on the lower screen using the stylus. Take care to recreate each square exactly as it is in the dungeon on your map. Yeah, the game does not update the map for you. Make sure that your map is accurate, otherwise you'll never pass this exam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes I do. I've finished this game like three times. Alright. Um, let's ask about the labyrinth. Tell us about this place. The soldier looks around him once before answering. Yeah, I mean, it's a forest within a tree. Mm-hmm. Usually you don't find forests underground, unless you're playing Minecraft. Oh, is that so, huh? Of course. This place is dangerous. His speech delivered, the soldier loses interest in you and returns to his post. You hesitate, unsure whether to ask him another question or let the matter drop. Let's let the matter drop. You decide to leave the soldier alone. Alright, let's get this adventure underway. Let's open up the party map here. And now we can draw the map. Uh, I'm clicking with a mouse. You will not do so if you are playing this on an actual DS. And we finally get into combat with a mole. Yeah, there's not really much you can do this early in the game. Oh, that hurt a lot less than I thought it would. I thought that would do about 9 damage. That went about as good as it possibly could have. I'm surprised that mole did not get the first strike. Oh, pressing the wrong button. So, let's map it like this, and... Here we go! Corner, and there is nothing at this dead end. Oh well. Let's go back. Round this. 
Alright, let's press on. Another encounter. This time with another single mole. Same strategy as before. That is, there's no strategy at all. See, that's the damage I was expecting. <laughs> oh man, Vensi, I think these moles have an affinity for you. You got a new item, Beast Bone. Yeah, uh, that's the thing about this game. You do not get... Why am I trying to... You know why? Because my medic is usually in that slot. But anyway. The thing about this game is that monsters do, do not drop money for you. They drop items. And you can sell those items to not only unlock further um, consumables, weapons, armor, and accessories, but you can also... Um, you also make some money off of those. Oh, uh... This might pose a problem. Okay, well, let's just see what happens. Okay, one's down. That'll make this a lot more manageable. Alright. I get this. Uh, actually, let's distribute it more like this. There we go. Good. <laughs> Funnily enough, that's actually what the, uh, what I'm going to be using for the thumbnail. Those wood flies there, it took me quite a long time to actually draw one of those, partly because I have basically zero artistic talent. <laughs> As you continue into the forest, you reach a clearing. Squarish boxes are lined up before you. It's possible they were left by fellow explorers in the labyrinth. Then, too, they may be parts of the treasure rumored to litter the labyrinth. The boxes sit ready to be opened, offering no clues to their nature. Well, let's open them up. This is a D and D. There won't be medics. You'll be fine. Uh, mimics. Mimics, not medics. Damn it. <laughs> Melprobisms, am I right? All right. Let's see here. We got a treasure box right here. Treasure box right here. Treasure box right here. And I mismapped again. There we go. Oh, and I should heal Cubix as well with Coastal. Which I already did, subconsciously. <laughs> Scramazax. Which Venti calls dibs on. Now Venti hits just a little bit harder. A Medka 2. Not terribly useful, but it's worth a fair amount. And 200 and tall. Good stuff. Oh, sh shoot. Um... Okay, uh, run. Come on, yes! I can always count on you, 98. Okay, um, I'll be going into some details about that claw bug. Um, very high physical defense, and it hits like a goddamn truck. And they have a lot of health. You'd be lucky to deal more than three damage a hit against it. You're looking at at least two or three rounds of combat with it. During that time, you'll probably hit one of your characters for about 20 to 25 damage, potentially one-shotting a level one character. Yeah, trying to fight that thing at level one, I mean, without an alchemist, it's suicide. Don't even try it. If you have an alchemist, they can use elemental magic, and that'll pretty much one-shot the claw bug. Fire magic especially will deal some, like, 50 damage. Anyway, so we're at this thing right now. Now this is why I ventured into the labyrinth at night. While walking through the narrow trail, you find a trickle of water near the end. The cool... The clear, cool water seems extremely tempting after your arduous hike. Arduous indeed. You hesitate, unsure of whether to slake your thirst or to pass by the water. Take a sip of the water, of course. Cupping, the, cupping your hands in the, in the stream, you bring a sip of water to your lips. The clear, cold water quenches your thirst. The party recovered 10 tech points. Feeling much better after drinking the spring water, you decide to move on. Alright. So yeah, that is a very, very important thing, because now I can stay in the labyrinth as long as I want. Now ordinarily, I'd use the spot to grind a little bit, but since I'm recording right now, I'm not gonna do that. I don't want to be wasting anybody's time grinding, and I don't feel like editing all that off screen. Alright, here's an encounter that's not too bad. Tree rats are pretty pitifully weak. And the wood flies. 
Sometimes they'll use a move where they just try to find some base head, and it's so slow that they'll almost certainly act the ones. Oh, and wood, uh, tree rats will occasionally try to run away from battle. Let the attack miss. There we go. Nicely done, Chaz Cat. Level up. So yes, as the tutorial text said, everybody gains a skill point for leveling up. For myself, that's going to be Quinn's front guard. Betsy is going to gain another rank in swords. <coughs> Coastal will gain another rank in healer. Cure 2 and Unbinder now available. Yeah, Cure 2, not going to bother with it. I don't like it. Uh, Chaska is going to gain another rank in bravery. And 98 will gain another rank in bows. Yeah, so for right now, there's not really a whole lot that I can gain with regards to skills. Yeah, so up until probably level 4 or 5, battles are going to be, are going to be very monotonous and repetitive. Hey, what's this thing? A mysterious crystal entwined with ivy blocks your path. It seems you cannot proceed. Alright, well, let's put a door icon there, and let's put a memo for it. Lock it. Okay, let's go on. There we go. You discovered a new item, a small thing, and a tiny petal. Good stuff. Chop spot, huh? I do not have anybody that can chop wood. Ever, I'll be getting into that later. So putting an item point there, and a memo so that I know how to chop here. Because if you try to chop normally... Oh. Right. I kinda just spoiled it, but anyway, yeah, there's a secret passage right there. Sorry about that, I've played this so many times, it's just kinda subconsciously... Yeah. Alright, so let's try and chop here. The party hasn't the necessary skill to cut wood here. Yeah, if you don't know how to handle an axe, you'll probably slip out of your hand while you're fumbling around, and it'll cut you and you'll really start bleeding. Oh, great. Oh, goodness. This is a bad thing. Uh, let's see here. Cure on cubics. Uh, bravery. And you can just attack. Alright, good thing I used that cure spell with cubics. There we go. It's one down. Oh, good. Yeah, the early game is, is just brutal, if that wasn't blatantly obvious. Alright, let's see here. Let's go ahead and heal. And I'm gonna try and make my way back to the, um, back to the free water spring. Hopefully I do not die along the way. An awful thing if somebody died this early on. Oh goodness. Blind side. Great. Oh, I can't heal anymore. This sucks. Come on, run away, you tree rat. Okay, I guess that can happen too. That's also good. Whew, okay. Close call. Yeah, yeah, take a sip. There we go. Heal, there we go. Now, in the remake of e Train Odyssey, that is um, Millennium Girl, you couldn't do that. You could only use the spring once each day, and it would heal 35 HP and 10 TP. <clears throat> Still, it was fine. You didn't have the early game wasn't as mega brutal in that game as it is in this. So, all right, I'm level two now, so these guys should be not as brutal. Okay, maybe they still are. <laughs> Particularly when I miss. There we go. 
Okay, nothing to it. I believe it just kind of goes like that. Yep, and that's that. Alright, so let's finish up mapping the first floor. Oh, but before I continue... There we go. Alright, so here we are. We are at another event, and before I trigger this event, I am going to select Coastal to use a Cure Spell. And let's interact with it. While walking through the forest, you find something furry at the trail's end. Initially thinking it a creature, you lower your guard upon realizing it's a boot. Could it belong to an adventurer? You weigh the options of picking up the dirty boot or leaving it where it lies. Let's look around. You thoroughly inspect the area around the boot. A close look reveals torn clothes and reddish stains on the ground. Signs point to dangerous beasts lurking nearby. Eyeing the boot, you wonder you wonder whether picking up is worth whatever danger is in store. Uh, I think it will be, actually. Let's pick up the boot. You gingerly pick up the dirty boot. It's rather heavy, due to the ivory-colored stones its previous owner had inside. Picked up white stone. Nice. As you marvel at the stones, the ground begins to shift unnaturally. The dreadful monsters who likely killed the boot's owner ambush you. I think there should be a couple of copies in there. Okay, three moles. We've done this encounter before. This shouldn't be a problem. Unless they all decide to target one person, which is entirely a possibility. Okay, I got this. Yeah, no problem. Great. That bravery helps out a lot. It actually doesn't. It's so slow, the fight should probably be well under control by the time it pops off. But that's okay. Didn't take too much damage. Hooray, everybody hits level 3. And I get a white stone, which is not something you can get unless you mine normally. Alright. Custom and assign those skill points. Back guard. Venti is going to get one more rank in swords. And then they're going to start working on the axes. Coastal will be getting one rank in Cure. Chazka is going to get a rank in Bravery. And 98 will get a rank in Bows. Multi-hits. And yes, they will be increasing this next up. Very important skill for them. Probably the most quintessential skill to being a survivalist is the ability to shoot several arrows at the same time. Alright. Okay, so let's get back down to this event tile here. Okay, let's get everybody healed back up. There we go. And there we go. Alright, let's see if we can make it back without anybody taking any injuries. Can we make it back without anybody taking any damage? No. No. <laughs> oh well. Youch. Okay, that's bad. Getting blindsided sucks in this game, because it gives the entire enemy team a free turn against you. Now, early on, this isn't such a bad thing, because you get blindsided by a uh, claw bug. But later on, getting blindsided could pretty much kill you. Alright. Almost back. We are nearly back. Alright. And back up the stairs. We are back in Etria. Let's go ahead and sell off all this junk we collected. Uh, sell off the medkit too, why not? The knife, sell off the white stone, beast bones, bone staff, small fangs, we get the dagger, but that's useless. Soft hides, hide ring, useless. <coughs> Alright, so let's rest up at the Rooster Inn. Sleep. Amazing, we slept for a whole four hours. 
save the game. And I think I'm going to end it right here. I don't think this first segment could have possibly gone any better. I've explored most of the first floor, nobody died, and yeah, I'm at level 3 now. So I think I'm going to end it here. I will see you guys in the next one, whenever I get around to it. Bye for now. Yeah, so we'll learn Shockwave next term. Alright, hell with a Shockwave. Unleashed energy, but it failed. Why did it fail, though? It took damage twice. Yeah, you can't fight a sandstorm. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Punch the greens as they fall?